Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. Today I kind of wanted to give you guys an update, a couple of things. An update to the RF Chieftain. We hit level 100 I think about two days ago. Um, this league, unlike other leagues, I actually decided to tackle Ubers on RF. Usually in SSF I do not do this. I don't have any videos for you. We've been doing pretty much all of it on the live stream, but you can see here. Um, I've downed Uber Shaper. We got an Echoes of Creation. Went for a second kill. Got a Tides of Time, which I think I will use for a future character. And then we did Awakener, which, oh boy, I really regret that, but we did get a massive ring from it. Now, I've done some changes to um, the build to kind of reflect some new items, like, say, Fallen. Now, you don't have to do these changes at all, but I genuinely think these are is a stronger setup for when you're doing T17 maps and or Ubers. In a typical T16 setting, I don't think you have to change anything. I think that, like, the recovery on block is totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and run a really rippy T17, and then we'll talk about it. So over here, I guess not crazy rippy, but, you know, with all things considered, it's uh, multi-proj AoE, vulnerability, fizzes lightning, endurance charge, uh, cannot be slowed, and unique monster has a random shrine buff and i'm also giving her delirium so this could actually turn out really bad this is not like i'm not gonna like completely blow this up right either it's gonna work out really well or it's gonna be a miserable fail but sometimes that's what youtube's good for right we're also putting this on an atlas with a lot of map modifier effect not the most but quite a bit so we're gonna go ahead and run this and uh yeah the next thing to state is you'll notice in the setup i don't have fire trap on my bar that is because our Penance Mark from Hateful Accuser is going to do most of the heavy lifting. And I have enough damage on the character where I can just clear normal content with RF and I don't mind. Okay, that was a big ass pop. Make sure we're on the right capture there. Yes, we are. Alright, so the first part is I am just going to walk or charge right to the boss. And then I'll worry about the ads after. Actually, I'll just take that shirt coming on. Never know where the boss is in this map. I don't run this map very often, so. Then again, to be fair, I run Fortress a bit, and I don't know where the hell the Fortress boss is ever, so... I guess that doesn't really change anything. <clears throat> Alright, I think probably right here? Right here. Okay, yeah. So the first goal is we want to make sure we Penance Mark the boss right away. So here's the boss. I am now going to Penance Mark. From here, it's just a matter of waiting for the Explode. Oh, actually, I used the wrong button. There we go. I had punishment on. Okay. You'll know... Okay, so there's an explode. You see the health going down? So, if you look at her, she is almost phased. And she is now phased. Okay, so now we go to next phase. Wait, isn't she supposed to do... I thought she was supposed to summon... Okay. Okay, I guess not. Where's, where's the... The Beyond Boss. There we go. I don't know why that took so long. Okay, so hit this guy. Now we just kind of hope we get an explode. Getting really unlucky there. It's usually I think like every six seconds or so we pull an explode. There's an explode. And then when he's half-life, I switch to punishment like this. You can see the damage ramp from that. Okay, back to her. And it's Mark. Think I saw an explode? Oh, lucky block. Okay, I'm gonna switch to punishment because she's sub half life. There's some weird bug where sometimes you can have like both penance mark. You have both penance mark and punishment on i don't know exactly how that works out oh hey dark's here nice i want to look at that now uh, i'm gonna go ahead and just clear the map as normal and kind of talk about the build a little bit so i saw a youtuber whose name is simply business uh and he was talking about he has like a similar like rf chieftain to me but he has a 
much heavier emphasis on uh, survivability and using this ring, Hateful Accuser, for Explode. So when I was watching his video, he was talking just a little bit about it. I didn't watch like a super long amount, but I saw one of the Explode pops on an Elder Boss and I thought to myself, you know, if he can use this for a boss fight, you know, why can't I? So we had this Hateful Accuser for a little while, we farmed it, and it was a little tricky to use it. Honestly, what I would, what I would recommend if you want to try using this are a few things. Number one, I went with Towering Threat and Assert Dominance times two. This allows me to keep a higher life pool, right, while still stacking AoE. So Assert Dominance over here, you get two of these. That's 25% AoE if you've killed five enemies recently. As long as you are using your Penance Mark on a boss fight, you will always have that up. The other nice thing is uh, you can also maintain your Frenzy Charges on a boss fight, which actually makes the Hateful Accuser ring not that bad. It makes it have life, Chaos Res, reduced effect of curses on you, which is really good because of things like vulnerability, for example. And then it also allows you to generate three Frenzy Charges. Um, so that's very, very nice. And that's pretty much it, other than two more factors. You really want a Cloak of Flame for this uh, variant. Higher Ignite Duration is better, because Ignite Duration is a multiplier to the Explode. Furthermore, I have went into these nodes for Ignite Chance and Ignite Duration to make sure that we hit uh, close to 100% Ignite. I'm not actually 100%, but 89 seems fine for me right now, so I don't really mind it. Other than that, I did not change anything else. That, so that's pretty much just the Penance Mark thing, right? Now, this Fallen Shield is different. The reasoning for this Fallen Shield, which you see right here, is when you start running content that is dumb rippy, example, Tier 17 maps, there's only so much damage you can mitigate, it becomes better to a point who just not take damage. And this is where Spallen comes in. Spallen allows you to get to 65 block, 65 spell block with Lucky. Lucky means it rolls twice. So this ends up being, I don't know, uh, math nerds pop out and let me know. Some are like low 90s percent, maybe high 80s. Uh, somewhere around there. Basically, it gets to the point where if you fuck up a boss mechanic, you probably will not take damage from it. And when you think of like an uber boss fight, right, sometimes it's just better to just, you know, try to tank it and not get hit 90% of the time than, you know, try to like run around the boss fight and lose God knows what, like maybe massive damage or like say an example with Awakener phase. If you're not being aggressive on Awakener, the longer the fight takes, the more dots or degens are spawning everywhere. So using Spallen, you can be like a lot more aggressive, right? Spallen, I definitely think, is the way to go for your <clears throat> your T17 viability and your um, your Ubers. I will state that I cleared quite a few T17s on this character without using Spallen, but then when I wanted to like run the rippier content, I just was not healing enough from the recovery shield. Never had this problem in T16, by the way. It was just a T17 thing. So after trying Spallen, I can definitely recommend it. I was very hesitant at first, extremely hesitant, but then I thought to myself, it would make sense in this type of content I'm running with the really rippy T17s. Okay, what do we have here? Fighting I cannot carry this. Yes, you can, dude. Yes, you can. <clears throat> Actually, wait, there's two Titan Greaves? Oh, shit. That's lucky. So we're just gonna finish clearing this, and then I'm gonna talk about kind of like what I've done. Um, now, as for the reason I'm not using Fire Trap, this one is interesting. So because Penance Mark is doing most of the heavy lifting, right? I just dropped Fire Trap to run a helmet that's more tanky. That's that's literally it. Um, my Penance Mark is doing, like, easily five plus times my Fire Trap, and it's very expensive to craft, like, plus one, plus one amulets and plus one, plus one weapons in SSF. To be fair, I could definitely, like, recombinate and get some better gear, but to be fair, I could recombinate and get better gear for the current setup. Now, you'll notice whenever I come across someone tanky like this, I'm actually running Vol RF so that I could Vol RF basically like this and kill him without needing Fire Trap. Um, so that way I'm not just reliant on like the explode to happen randomly. I still have pretty good damage just by myself, just not nearly as much damage to tackle, you know, T17 bosses with only Righteous Fire, as that is a much bigger investment. A lot of people ask about Vol Righteous Fire. 
I would not really recommend running it for the average user. You really have to understand how to use it. It's used for burst damage. So like here, see how these guys aren't dying? Okay, never mind, I got an explode. You can vol RF, and if you have really high chaos res, you can pair it with a flask called Forbidden Taste, so that when you press vol RF and you lose your HP, you can gain it back with Forbidden Taste. This makes like a very clean playstyle. All right, and we are pretty much done there. Let me just drop the Regal for sure. All right, cool. Now this character is not fully optimized for Svalin at all. I'm going to show you how I got my current block chance and you guys can all laugh at me for being inefficient. Uh, I pretty much set this up in quite literally 10 minutes. So all I did was just remove. Um, so I, first off, I removed some life nodes. So I dropped like tireless and I dropped a lot of straggler 5% life nodes. And instead, you can see I went into uh, sanctuary with 1% chance to a block per five attack block on shield. And then I went into Wall of Steel, but you can see down here, which I had always. So at the moment, we dropped Glancing Blow, and we took Sanctuary. Then I came over here, and I grabbed Arcane Guarding, which I would really like to not have. I have Anointed Deflection, so I can gain Endurance Charges when I block. I lose damage because I'm not using Disciple of Unyielding. And I slotted in a Reckless Defense that I happen to have, which is a 6-6 which helps me achieve the attack block I need. I'm actually not capped attack block. I'm uh, 64, 55. So some things I'm hoping to do, um, I want to I want to play around with POB and swing back to this left side, come back up through here, and maybe see about taking like aggressive Bastion. Because this is Endurance Charge on kill while holding a shield. I actually prefer Endurance Charge on kill for mapping and Endurance Charge on block for bossing. So with this setup, I could have the best of both, or I could potentially change my anoint. Um, so that's something we'll experiment with. As for my helmet, it's literally just like a high life, life regenerating helmet. It's nothing crazy at all. But it gets fizz damage taken as, which I really like, and it has ink AoE, which I kind of need to help explode the hateful accuser stuff. If you want to see my gear, it's actually garbage. For example, my weapon has literally only two properties. Not very impressive at all across the board. I have like a T1 dot multi on the amulet, no dot multi on ring. Nothing crazy at all. On um, the damage feels pretty solid. Even my clusters actually. My clusters are, um, you can see there's nothing on this large cluster. It's just chaos res. And these don't even have damage at all, right? These are literally just life and AoE. And then I'm running reckless defense. And then my, my standard jewels, nothing crazy in SSF. There is another option where you can take defiled forces and you can keep refreshing the ignite. The problem I have with this is you're proccing an ignite like every like five to six seconds normally and defiled forces too many bosses I encounter have phases which just removes the entire ignite so I think that defiled forces is very good for cheesing specific content like say fortress boss or you know just bosses in general who do, who do not phase a lot right um, other than that, I have a shit ton of open gem sockets because I'm not using, I have to figure out what to put in them. Probably a casting damage taken set up. And then in this fallen, I currently have a storm brand, purifying flame, and life tap. Um, the only reason for any of this, basically purifying flame creates conk ground, although I need to quality it so I can hopefully like actually gain the benefit of it. And then storm brand is only meant to hit. Um, the only reason I need a hit is because when I penance mark a target, every second it gets hit, the penance mark will essentially um, create the phantasms. And I want that as consistent as possible. So that's where this whole setup comes in from. Other than that, you could play this exact setup and just literally use the fire trap helm still, right? Like this was my old helmet for fire trap. You can just put it on, everything's fine. Uh, you will notice though also, um, I dropped some aura nodes. So, I'm currently not running. I know this is a lot of info. I'm just explaining for people because it's been a few days. I'm currently not running Flesh and Stone. And I think Flesh and Stone is a fantastic aura. However, when you notice like when I'm running T17s or if I'm uber farming, a lot of the time you cannot be in the target's face. Whether it's because it's going into an immune phase or it's just doing something weird which then makes Flesh and Stone not really have value because if you're not next to the target, you're not getting the damage reduction. So I just pretty much got rid of it. I even dropped Skitterbot, but the only reason I dropped Skitterbot is because I'm not using Fire Trap anymore. 
Uh, because I'm not using Fire Trap and I don't have the mana to run Unbound Ailments with Skitterbot, I just dropped it. So I'm quite literally running a shit ton of open gem sockets, which is kind of cool though in a way because this is telling me that if I had, for example, an Enlighten, I could save another skill point right here. Anyway, just some loose theory crafting. So hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to continue blasting T17s and farming on this character. And then I think we're going to be working on a Lightning Strike Trickster next. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about the next build, so I'm excited for that. For people who are curious, this Cloak of Flame took over 4,000 fusings, did not 6 link at all. I was level 99 at 97% to 100 when I found Einhar, who gave me a 6 link for a unique body. Um, so I basically hit level 100 before ever having a 6 link Cloak of Flame. I actually fell in love with Lightning Coil. I'm a big fan of Lightning Coil now. It's just... Honestly, it's just less damage and harder to run. That's about it. Coil is very solid, though. So anyway, I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash Sundays. See you guys all tomorrow, and thanks for watching.